I'm going to take this truth of humility and uh, I'm going to apply it to sin. Humility and sin. Let's go to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And we're going to look at the Apostle Paul's life. And I want you to see what humility did, with, or what sin did in his life. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 13. Paul says, um, Who was before a blasphemer? That's what Paul was. And a persecutor. And an injurious. But I obtained mercy, because I did it, ignorantly in unbelief. Paul was quite a bad person before he got saved. Verse 15, And this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. What humbled Paul? How did Paul get his humility? Realizing the kind of sinner he was. He, I was a terrible sinner. And it's ever before me. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 9. For I am the least, Paul is speaking, for I am the least of the apostles. And I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. And I have labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Paul says, I'm not worthy. I'm a sinner of all sinners. And I'm not worthy to be an apostle. Wait a minute. Paul confessed his sin. Paul got saved and said, Lord, what will I have me to do? And he got busy doing it. And when you confess your sin, what does God do with it? He forgives it. And he... For, takes away and forgets it. So why does Paul remember it? God forgave it. Didn't he forgive you? Well, you don't know what kind of a sinner I was. You don't know what I did when I was a sinner. Yeah. But if you got saved, you got cleansed, and God forgot it. Paul never forgot it. He kept bringing back, and that's what kept him humble. Do you know what? Many people get saved and they don't want to talk about their past. People get saved and they don't want to talk about their past. Say, I'm not the man I used to be. I used to go here. I don't go there anymore. I used to hang around this crowd. I don't hang around that crowd anymore. I used to have this habit. I don't have that habit anymore. See, they've been changed, saved, and sometimes that is your greatest testimony. God saved me from that forgave me of it and he changed me that's the greatest mark of conversion because I'm changed and I don't like those things anymore he took the desire away he gave me a new life and he gave me a new power to live that life see that's a testimony that's a testimony that's what Paul had let me go to one more. Ephesians chapter 3. We're using Paul as an example. Talking about sin and humility. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 8. Unto me, who am least than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. He said, God, pick me up the lowest on the ladder and gave me a great opportunity to preach about him and what he did to me, that grace that saved me. Wow. Now Paul was somebody 
If you bring Paul up to date, he'd have all kinds of doctor's degrees behind his name. He would have all kinds of uh, expertise. I studied at Gamaliel's feet, and I was head of this, and I was leader in that, and, and uh, he put it all aside. He said, I'm not here because I'm so smart. I'm not here because of what I did. He said, I'm ashamed of what I did. I'm here because of the grace of God that saved me and changed me. That's a wonderful thing. So that new life in Christ is what a wonderful thing it is. Let's go to one thing more about Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now this is where it gets practical, personal. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Then he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for me, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, Paul said, Lord, you gave me a problem. It's a thorn in my flesh. It's something that Satan just ugh, gets me. Take it away. I didn't bring it about. You brought about, Lord, take this problem away. Take this weakness away. Take this frustration away. God says, no, I don't want to take it away, Paul, because it'll humble you. Paul, you remember, you got caught up in a vision to heaven. And you saw things that nobody else saw. And you came back. I want to keep you humble. So I want to give you a problem. Yeah, but this problem irritates me, and it's hard for me to go on with this problem. And he prayed three times to take it away, and God says, no. He says, you're better off being humbled by it. Ever know anybody like that? Ever have a problem like that? See? I'd like to be six inches taller. I'd like to be a better basketball player. I'd like to be healthier. But God says, no, for what I want you to do, that's all you need. You don't need to be six feet tall. Okay, Lord, I'll accept that. And you go on. And some people are physical. Some people. I remember when I was in college, they invited a guest speaker to the preacher's class. And uh, when they brought him in on the platform, brought us in, just a preacher's class, here's this guy who's going to speak to us. And the teacher of the class said, uh, we've got a guest speaker today. And I looked at this guy, and I said, hmm, he just doesn't look too sharp. His hair wasn't really combed very well. He sat with his feet crossed, his legs crossed, and he sat like a girl. I mean, guys don't cross their legs like that. And he had his Bible in his lap, and uh, while we were singing an opening song, the Bible fell off onto the ground, and he didn't even pick it up. This teacher came over, picked it up off the ground, and gave it back and put it back in his lap. When he introduced him, he was going to be a speaker today, and he walked to the platform, he walked with a deformed body, and his fingers were like this. And he thumbed his Bible very difficultly. And he said, God has called me to preach. And I thought, where in the world would you preach? Who would have you? And he said, God saved me with this body and called me to be an evangelist. And I thought, wow, what can you do? You need assistance. And he says, I'll tell you where I preach. He went to hospitals where people were just like him. And they were all twisted up. And he said, listen, God saved me and he gave me something to do that I can do and I want to be a blessing to you. Now listen, God gives grace to those people. And I thought, praise the Lord, somebody would listen to him before they'd listen to me. Somebody would look at him and say, I can identify with you. You've got a worse handicap than I've got. Well, what a blessing. What a blessing. See? But God says to Paul, I want to keep you humble. Now, I imagine this fellow went pretty humble too. I imagine he was turned down from a lot of other places. But God gave him a specific task and a place to go where they were glad to have him. And they brought him to the preacher boy's class and said, hey, you know, I want you to meet somebody. Here's testimony. See, you're not bad as off as he is, but uh, God used him. He can use the rest of us. Think about some of these things. So...